Hello. We are discussing anatomy and physiology of speech. This is part seven. So far, we have gone through eight presentations already. And this is the ninth presentation in the series. This is about articulation. We have already discussed that. To begin with, power energy is required, provided principally by the lungs. Then, in the process of spit production, the vocal cord take over, and there is what is called phonism. Next, you find amplification and filtering of the frequencies generated by the vocal cord and that is called resonation. After that, there is articulation. So, what is that articulation we are discussing in this particular part? We have already defined articulation previously. Articulation means joint. It is like any skeletal joint in the body. Temporal manipular joint or shoulder joint or, or hip joint. But here, the bones are not articulating. The soft elements are there. And sometimes, along with the soft, the hard elements are also there like the teeth, but the union is temporary. Whatever articulation is there, it occurs for a very short duration. And then it is undone. It is done and undone. Now, after articulation, whatever emerges from the mouth and maybe from the nose is the speech, which might have begun in the brain because as I am speaking here, obviously I have thought about what I am going to speak. The thinking cannot occur at the level of the lung or larynx. It occurs obviously at the level of the brain. In dentistry and related sciences, the most important part in the speech production is articulation. Because articulation may be disturbed by whatever restorations a dental surgeon provides to the patient. Can be a denture or any other restoration. Or it may be some surgical treatment. As for example, orthognathic surgery, straightening the jaw, or even orthodontic treatment. So one has to know before the treatment is rendered, whether the articulation speech is okay or not. And after the treatment has been provided, is there any improvement in the speech if it was not okay before treatment? Or there is some deterioration in the speech? Whatever restaurants are provided by a dental surgeon and whatever surgery is done 
by the oral macular facial surgeon and other surgeons. It has to be perfect. It is not supposed to be at any growth level that the speech may be disturbed, generally. Subtle level, and that is very important. If you think in terms of not only an ordinary man, but you think in terms of a teacher, a speaker, orator, a singer, a leader, then for them the speech is very important. And they do not want any distortion in the speech. On the contrary, they want improvement if there were any distortions. So this background I've given and whatever I may miss, I will be covering in the subsequent part. Now, let me share the screen and go for the PowerPoint presentation. And here it is. Speech part 7, articulation. And already we know about the larynx, which is called the voice box. Yes. So articulation is a transient joint. I already discussed that. It is made and unmade immediately. Uh, we have already covered the parts or speech organs, parts of the body involved in speech production. And as far as the articulators are concerned, there are some which are fixed or immovable, like, like the hard palate or the fit, that is an upper and lower. These are fixed. On the other hand, the most mobile articulator is the tongue. It is the tongue which will contact any part of the palate, heart palate, or dentition, maybe incisor. Tongue is highly mobile. And that's why it has to be perfect. In whatever it does. If there is an ulcer on the tongue, the speech will be disturbed. Articulation will be disturbed. If there is a glossectomy, partial or complete. Again, the articulation is in danger. But it can be restored. That is Welcome, is it? Then, among the mobile articulators, soft palate, which is commonly called vellum, is very important. Apart from its role in the articulation, uh, where in, it can come in contact with the tongue, its position is variable. It may close the junction between the nasal region and oral region, nasopharynx and oropharynx, partly or completely. For some sounds, it should not close the junction. As for example, for M, N, singer and G. There, the junction should not be close between the nasal part of the pharynx and oral part of the pharynx. And apart from this, even the vocal cords 
may be helpful in the articulation apart from phonation and pharynx is another movable articulator because its wall is made up of a number of muscles along with the other elements. So pharynx also can help in articulation by its mobility. And unusually, even the hard bone has been described as an articulator. So, which are the articulators we have already considered? The movable and immovable. And they are all there in the diagram. I hope you are familiar with the structures which are shown in the diagram. And uh, I, I must sit and uh, show you those structures, those who are not well versed in the anatomy. Flow like this. Here it is. The uh, mobile articulator. Now, here it is. Other mobile articulators, I will go uh, oh, here. Uh, lastly, I talk about the pharynx. So, here is the pharynx. Among the mobile articulators, this is velum, subvelum. The vocal fold is in this situation. Vocal fold. The fifth articulator, the heart palate divided into different parts. Usually three parts are divided. And obviously the teeth are there, upper and lower. Not only inside that, even other teeth are important. That's why absence of teeth may also play their role. Anodontia may also play its role in distorted articulation. And I mentioned that some people say that even hard bone is an articulator. So that high bone is in a section in hard bone. And now we go beyond this. Now, as we speak uh, in uh, any language, Vowels and consonants are very important. In English, the vowels are usually A, E, I, O, U. We are familiar with the letters of uh, this language and several other languages. But apart from the letters, there are sounds and Symbols. If somebody is a phonetician, phonetics expert, uh, will be more comfortable with sounds and symbols. Now, vowels are those elements which are independent, beginning from the vocal cord. The vowels pass uninterruptedly without any interference through the mouth and nose. In Gujarati, we call them swara. On the other hand, consonants, they 
में एफेक्ट द वोकल कोर्ड वोकल कोर्ड और कोर्ड में वाइब्रेट नॉट वाइब्रेट ऑल्सो इन केस ऑफ कॉन्सर्ट एंड वट ओवर वाइब्रेशन आर प्रोड्यूस इन द एयर विल एनकाउंटर सम ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन मे बी इन द माउथ and then the air ultimately passes out to the mouth and maybe to the nose so interference for consonants no interference for vowels and we now go beyond this how do we classify consonants what about the vowel uh, i will cover later maybe in the forthcoming presentation classifying consonants the manner of production usually we begin with what are called plosives here they are third l is with l and then suddenly release p b t d g k now as for example if you take a uh, p p then the upper and the lower lip come in contact if you don't allow them to approach each other then you can't produce p b and likewise b so suddenly the air is released voice on the right hand side you find the consonant which are voice as for example b their vocal cords vibrate if you consider s as for example summer and z z s is always a passive and z is voice no we consider the p and b the p is on voice but the b is voice so how we can find out whether a particular sound needs to vibration of the vocal cord well we have to put our hand on the adam apple now i would like to show that here Just stop sharing, and then you can finish uh, better. Here, uh, I will stand up. Here. Now, if I put my hand on my thyroid cartilage, Adam's apple. and then i pick as for example p p and then b b it is believed that one can appreciate the vibration of the vocal cord there are other sophisticated method by which uh, research is have been made about this and we will discuss about them like now so voice means there must be vibration of the vocal cord on voice there is no vibration is that fine now i will again say and
Let us uh, come back to the presentation. Here it is. Apart from produce, there are three cases like ever. Apple flower, is it fruit? Now, what happened here? We will consider in the next slide. F V T H is top, top flower, and V is very top is thing. And you can see where they are figuring. F is here. Always. Think. So is here. Always. But V is fortunately voice. V for voice. In case of fricatives, friction is produced. That's why they are called fricatives. And if a sound is between plosives and fricatives, we call it affricative. Cha, cha of cha. Cha. And in Gujarati, cha, cha, affricative. Lateral, L is lateral. The air passes lateral to the tongue. And then uh, rolled is R. And nasal, two are mentioned here. The air passes through the nasal cavity, nose, M and N. That means top palate or velum must be down. Allowing the passage of air from the oropharynx to the nasopharynx. Uh, where I have not explained in detail, uh, I may cover it up anytime. Now compare the sounds T and T. So here I have written T. So TH. Is figuring in both. So, do and ta. And the th is a fricative. Fine. So, we have classified the consonant according to manner of production. Whether the air is with L and immediately released. What's going That will be plausible. Or it is not that forceful. It is not like an explosion. Then it is a fricative. And there is some friction between the articulating elements, like the leaf and teeth, as for example. A fricative is intermediate. Nasal is easier, the air has to pass ultimately through the nostrils, through the nostrils. Classification of consonant sounds based upon the manner of articulation. Uh, already we have considered, but this is as per Berkowitz. Produced P, B, T, D, T, K. T and K are right at the back. In the velar region, soft panel. This is right from front to back. P is at the lip. B is at the lip. Both the lips. T and D are immediately behind. You try to speak T and D and you will get the idea. And G and K are coming from dip, are coming from dip. 
fricative we already considered a fricative we have considered a p at j actually c h i think we can put together then it is better c and h cannot be separated like this because it is chop and chop well uh, the air is released fast but not as fast as in case of p b t d e k nasal we have already considered lateral we have considered air is four to you size of mouth size of the mouth not front or back or anything but size and then we go to the next according to place of production how do we classify consonant bilabial if upper and lower lips are involved then it is bilabial b p m the difference between these three m is nasal then if the lower lip touches the lower lip touches the upper teeth f b it is labiodental f v you try to pick flower and very and you will get the idea if for this articulation do not occur that can be problem that's why you have to be very careful when you provide any any restoration the lip have to meet for bpm the lower lip and the upper incisors have to meet for for labiodental sound f v and then the thing is where the tongue is required to touch the other articulator the other articulator uh, uh, at 3 4 5 affects one it is the tongue which is moving teeth are not moving alveolus is not moving palate is not moving and the letters uh, for lingua dental theta theta lingua alveolar sanskrit letter and uh, in english the uh, t d s z n l ling lingo or lingua alveolar some people use it uh, the word lingo rather than lingua and then uh, lingua palatal chu i have put the symbols there just lingua palatal chu and just and j also velar well spelling uh, you just check g k and sing this is right at the top palate and that part of the tongue may come in contact with the top palate it is not necessary that in all the examples the tongue must touch to another articulator there may be air between them and no actual touching they are in close approximation but they may not touch that's why this may be a air joint the intervening medium is air air joint and glottal is produced at the vocal cord i told you that vocal cords also can act as articulator that sound h h is from there so place of production at the lips labiodental lingo or 
lingua dental, lingua alveolar, alveolar is palate actually. Lingua palatal. So different parts of the palate are involved. And velar is of course top palate. And glottal is glottis is where vocal cords are. L is the sole lateral in the English language. And next. Now see, uh, I have uh, taken this from uh, Malek 2008 and the reference is given below. You see where in the heart palate different letters and sounds are produced. Well, before that, PBM is at the lip. In Sanskrit, uh, we call it osteum. This is PBM. But for M, of course, and for N also, the nasal cavity is required. Then, front of the heart palate. Then I will return clearly T D L N S and Z. Now S and Z you not because after you provide a denture, this S and Z are likely to be affected maximum. If you talk about the Gujarati language. Then, so, somebody knows so, sha, the sha is of uh, shambhu, as for example, sharkara, and another sha is there in Gujarati and Sanskrit and Hindi, but not there in English. That sha is of rushi. Satkorn. So these are all different. But so and Z. So these are likely to be affected maximum. That you should know. It is at the heart palate region, front of the heart palate, a little behind that, jaw and jaw. And uh, still behind in the region of the soft palate, K and G. K and G. And of course, K and K. And you can uh, consider if you go for the Gujarati language, then Ka Ka, Ki Ki, Ku Ku, Ke Ke, Ko Ko, Kam Ka, the complete is there. Likewise, Ka Ka, Ki Ki, Ku Ku. Like that. So this car is at the back, right at the back, deep. And, and also notice here, I found out that uh, the number of teeth on one edit one is there. We have to remove. We, we don't expect uh, more than three molars. Generally, rarely there may be four more. And now, a little bit of practice we can have from the physiology of mouth by Jenkins, 1978. And you can see very well, lastly we considered K and G. And this is the tongue. And tongue is touching the venom, K and G. And no air is passing from below into the nasal region. Very important. But M, yes, the air is passing through the nasal region to emerge out at the nostril. And M means, again, upper and lower lip are in contact. And tongue is uh, nowhere in picture as such, not touching the palate anywhere. P and B is like M. You can see. 
upper and lower lip are touching. But there is not warping through the nasal region. Sing and G sing. And there you find again the tongue is in broad contact with the vellum and the air is passing through the nasal region. F and V, you can see the lower lip is touching the tooth inside us here. And again, sub palate is closing the junction of the oropharynx there with the nasopharynx. But not in N. Not in N. And it open. But again, the N, the tip of the tongue, now here it is uh, not lip, but tip of the tongue is touching. The tooth, as you can see. That's fine. Yes, it was lower lip or F and V. And TD, the tip of the tongue is touching the alveolus. And roughly hard palate, front, top, theta. And again, see how the tip of the tongue is touching the tooth here, top. And you can confirm, you see, we, uh, whatever uh, is possible, you see, teeth are at the front, tongue we can see moving. If we take a mirror, uh, we can find out what is happening, isn't it? And finally, S, you can see everything is uh, clear, but uh, this is narrow. And the tip of the tongue is very close to the alveolus there, isn't it? And well, if it is a uh, in Gujarati saw, then the tongue will be uh, close to the lower teeth rather than the upper. So, sabidi, so or sabidi in Gujarati. And uh, so this is the. Uh, this is articulation. And the part involved, you must uh, not perfect it. Somebody who is not uh, well worked in anatomy, uh, for them, this is important the uh, nasal cavity, nasal pairing, soft palate or vellum, oral pairing, this is oral cavity, this is hard palate, this is tongue. Where the tooth is, uh, this is the alveolus. And, uh, the teeth capsules are there, upper and lower, uh, upper and lower uh, lip are here. The lower lip. And very important, not the position of the soft palate. In all the nine cases, we can found here. And we go beyond this. And if you speak out the sentences, then you will get a better idea about the letters which are shown on the right. Bobby popped up my balloon. So not B, P, and M. Go get the cot and bring it back. Bring it. There. NG is there, and the nasal region will pass the air, sub palate will be lower in position. Tom did not do it. TDN. Father found some cock. F and V are there. Father found some coffee. Well, uh, V is not there, but F and TH are there. Father. They thought there were three. Again, then Tom or T H is there. Jack jumped by the children. J and T S. T H is top. Chair, as for example. Chairman. The little was late in school. L. Roy Rogers sports was triggered. R. Will you go with William? No, we have not considered W. You and your young sister will go next year. Why we have not considered so far? Some people call it uh, vowel, 
six tetras show the zebra in the zoo. As and that we have considered already. They will wash the dish in the garage or get it. But a set that shop. She is also soft. Isn't it? Shoe is also soft, like that. That shaw is of Shankar, Sharkaram, also. Is that fine? And going beyond this, an exercise. The soft palette, now I have corrected the spelling, E E L U N, is not under your direct control, but you can control your lips, tongue, and manual. And try to speak PBM without allowing the lips to touch each other. Try now to speak F and V, but do not allow the lower lip to touch the upper incisor. Now control your tongue and try to speak ta, ta, da, da, no. And subsequent four letters of the Gujarati alphabet. Keep your mouth wide open and the mandible fully depressed. And then try to speak the same alphabet. This is all very important. If there is foul occlusion, as for example, class one, class two, class three of angle, or the skeletal foul occlusion produced by prognathism and retrognathism, and in such conditions. The speech is disturbed because some elements are not able to articulate. Well, the articulation of the lip and teeth is required. It is not happening. Or upper and lower lip required and not happening. Then obviously, the sound production, speech production will be defective. Some letters emanate from deep vocal tract. These are from deep vocal tract. And that we can appreciate as we speak. Fifth and prosthodontic, uh, well, uh, unlimited uh, material, literature is available. And whatever uh, we are doing, putting the teeth in perfect manner, setting them perfectly tongue position, every cup, how it should be. We know it and we do it. And uh, similarly, other restorations, not only denture, any restoration, including implant, if you have done it correctly, then the picture articulation will remain undisturbed. Otherwise, there may be what is called pronunciation of S for S. There may be what is called lisping. And here, other words are used. Slushy speech, imprecise speech, imprecise articulation, like that. So, the occlusion is important, how you set the teeth is important. If there, there is deformity in the jaw, then that has to be corrected. And usually we give importance to aesthetics and mathematics. Aesthetic. But uh, speech must be given due recognition. And Mississippi or Mississippi is not enough. You have to go beyond that. Otherwise, if there is any distortion in the speech, you will miss it. And, well, patients are very kind. Human body is highly adaptable. Sometimes the patients do not complain. But if somebody is a singer or a speaker or a teacher, actor, they will mind it. Even little deviation in the speech, they would not accept. They would not like to accept. And we have to respect 
that way. So how do we study now? Uh, which has been studied, different articulations, uh, what is happening at the vocal cord level and supra vocal tract, everywhere in the pharynx, in the back of the tongue, in the soft palate. And you can't see it in the mirror, isn't it? So special methods are required. Wherever you can see, you, you should try to study that way. But uh, the research is uh, are required to be perfect. And that's why X-ray imaging, strain, gauge or gauge monitoring, articulatory tracking, X-ray microbeam imaging, electromagnetic sensing, optoelectronic tracking, electropeletographic monitoring, peletograms are there, Lugai or rugi as yes, some people pronounce it. So what is the effect? Should we give rugi in a denture? Well, if you give rugi, then the thickness in that area will increase. And that will uh, reduce the space for the tongue. Very important. Tongue must get in a space for articulation. That's why if you set in a denture the teeth lingually, the tongue will be hampered and articulation will be defective. And likewise, the plate which is adapted to the hard palate must be thin. You can't make it thick. And that's why though rugai may be helpful because the tongue will be touching there. Tongue will get proper idea where it is touching. But if the rugai are Harmful as poor material in the denture will interfere with the tongue space, will reduce the tongue space. Then MRI, ultrasonic imaging, aeromechanical observation, acoustic observation, acoustic. Now, hearing and speech are interrelated. The time we start learning speaking, For example, there they see other speak, they hear other speak. So that is how one learns speaking, isn't it? And so the now the hearing uh, auditory now, eighth now is very important here. And even the second now, because you observe other speaking. And this is a repetition, labiodental, where the lower lip and the upper incisors are touching, father and way, F and V. Tha, tha is father, tha, da. Lingual, tha, the lingual means it may be linguodental or lingua dental, lingua alveolar, lingua palatal, and even lingua velar. And the word content here will give you some better idea. Thick, that, tip, do, no, lip, row, shaw, zebra, shaw, cat, king, cat, sing, yes. Here two shaw are covered. So, of show. Simplex and show, of show, S H O W. And H is special because it is produced at the level of the vocal cord. We already considered that. And the consonant chart is there. Very important to know the manner of uh, production. For the consonant, plosive, uh, these are all uh, plosive and plosive and applicate combination. Whether the consonant uh, voiceless or voice, usually voiceless is mental first and then the voice. So P and B. 
Neden değil? White Latin man can fall. And can uh, they check the uh, D and T part? T and K. Like that. And uh, on the right hand side, my labial uh, lingua alveolar, lingua velar. These are all mansion. The symbols are there, which are difficult. I will just point out the symbol. Here it is. Difficult to master them. This is for cha, chu. And this symbol is for cha, j, just. Similarly here, fricative and shaw, shaw, they are called similar, another term. So, these are uh, similar, that's why the word is cognate. So that's why F and V, V and F, Kita. this is a, uh, this is a little difficult because ta and this is da. Da. Similarly, H is glottal, M is a nasal and bilabial. Like that. You can study yourself and we go beyond that. And, uh, this, so, uh, I quickly read out that shoe and sugar is a bit front non void lingua palatal aspirated similar. The degree of breath stream obstruction is considerable, although not as much as for S or some. And the spit muscles are tense. It is produced by closing the velopharyngeal pore. That means soft palate is raised. Elevating the flattened tip blade and body of the tongue so that the blade nearly touches the alveolar ridge. Blade is uh, behind the tip of the tongue. The size of the tongue contact contiguous teeth and gums of the heart palate, and the tongue is broadly grooved in such a way that breath stream must pass centrally down the tongue and out of the mouth rather than pass the lateral margins of the tongue as in L. The tongue is grooved somewhat broader than for for uh, of some resembling placement for for again a symbol is there. The jaw is lowered slightly and the lips are mildly rounded. This sound is the loudest of the sibilan and fricatives. You will find out what this symbol stands for. Is it chow? You just find it out. Actually, there is a series, and I, I come to that little later. Okay. Here. International phonetic alphabet. That symbol, right? Symbols are given. For example, we consider she, ocean, sugar, nation. And contrasted with other casual, etc. Is it voiced or unvoiced? That is also Madsen. Place of articulation, manner of articulation, frequently. So this two are there. Now this is a symbol. And the sound is za as a we were wondering about this one. And uh, uh, I, I told you, you know, see it. Chill. That is there. C and J, Jack, Jin, and 
other things are also mentioned here. Place of articulation, tongue and boundary of T3 is alveolar and heart pad. And so there are groups of actually sound, and I will uh, come to that in a short while. In Sanskrit, uh, this particular site, uh, Tatuam.org, very important because uh, this, uh, the names are different. Uh, uh, the anatomical terms are not used by many people, and there are confusions. The uh, heart palate, uh, the talu is there. So, derived from that, there is talo view. Then, this velar, cunt, cuntium. This is murda, the front part. This is uh, where the tooth is, dental, dental. Uh, Lips. As for example, for B and P, osto, osto, hostess name, like that. So, one should try to write down the complete alphabet in any language along this palette. And this complete upper boundary, because that is fixed, uh, except the upper lip. Upper lip is also more or less fixed. And uh, the tongue is mobile. So again, which part of the tongue is touching which part of the palate or teeth and lip? So is it the tip of the tongue or the middle part or blade of the tongue? In anatomy, we call this the tip, then there is body, then there is root. But uh, non-technical people, those who are not uh, well versed in anatomy, they use other tongues. They use the base of the tongue and blade of the tongue like that. The tongue is very important. Uh, we have discussed about the muscles of the tongue. It is the most mobile, movable articulator. And some more details of the muscles I will be adding in the forthcoming presentation. Now, along this line, whatever alphabet I am going to show, you have to put that. There are five classes. And you have to put them here. Uh, it's Sanskrit. Let's see. Ka, ka, ga, ka. Begin at the back. Ka class, that is called it. Ka, ka, ga, ga. Um. Now, this is Ganga. So, that will be there. Then, next will be Cha, 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 that is uh, difficult. The last two, the nasal ones, I find very difficult to appreciate and the experts are also getting confused or they make us confused. Then next will be ta ta da da no. Next ta ta da da no. Pa pa ba ba ma. Obviously. Ta. Ta when you pronounce you get at the tooth, ta. And when you pronounce pa, you are at the lip, ostia. And this are right at the back. Your or love or well, ha. The three uh, sus, if you want to call them, sha, sha, sha. Difficult. This is the simplest. So of sagri, saran, simple. Is the simplest. Then sha of sharkara. Well, the experts are confused and they are not showing the location perfectly. Uh, is it murdanya or talavya? That has to be worked out. Shaw. And this saw of rushi. And shut corn. And uh, this, uh, this saw requires raw tongue. Tongue is bent backward. And again, the muscles will be important. Which muscles are moving the tongue like that? And the alphabet. 
Forex Seminar, Kaka Gaga Han, Chacha Jazaya, Kaka Dajana, Tata Dajana, Papa Papa Moyer, Lobo, then Shah, 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 or up from no, and then now, uh, of course, Wobel uh, Tate. Now think about the continents. And let's say the first one, uh, what is touching what? The, the lips are touching each other. So this is the, it may be B or P or M, but sub palette part they have avoided. That's why we are not able to say exactly whether M is there or not there. Next one, the lower lip is touching the inside or upper, it may be F. F for fun, isn't it? Or V for very. Next, the tip of the tongue is touching. Here it was the lower lip. Here the tip of the tongue is touching the upper incisor. So, ta, ta. And then, tip of the tongue is touching the alveolus. So, lingua alveolus. If you go for from ta to ta, 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 then you will get the idea there. Because that group, ta, ta, da, da, na, ta, ta, da, da, na, it will be good. Well, you don't find any touching there, so find out what letters we can pronounce here. And there, the tongue. Back is touching the vellum, top palate. Uh, top palate is avoided in all the other sketches. And so this is uh, for K, G, etc. Finger, for example. Both K and G are involved in that. So this is uh, for K and G. A good exercise. And finally, uh, the references are there and uh, well, the great book of by Sitcher and Dubrul. The book is there, but this was from their article, from Dubrul's article, uh, 1976, fine. And for the applied in prosthodontics and in the clamp leaf and palette. References are there, two of them. I'm not including many. I have gone through many books on anatomy and physiology of speech and hearing, particularly. Because speech and hearing go together. And all the dental books of anatomy and physiology for dental students and other maxillofacial students. A lot of uh, work is required. And you will be able to. Or do it better with the passion. Uh, study uh, on yourself and study on your passions. And as I told you, I, I'm just stopping uh, to share. The Mississippi is not enough. You have to go for maybe entire alphabet if somebody is a singer or a speaker or, or hero, heroine, right? Then ask them to speak the entire language, the mother tongue or the English language, whatever language uh, they are proficient in, right? And uh, so the five classes are there, as I mentioned, in Gujarati. I mean, the first will be then then at the lip. There is five classes are there. And similarly, in Sanskrit also. Right. English only 26 letters. Letters are left. Symbols are more, sounds are more important, right? And uh, 
to whatever I wanted to cover in this. Uh, I think I have covered uh, till uh, before uh, I and uh, well, I wanted to define, I wanted to classify articulators, role of muscles. Well, the role of muscles, uh, of course, is there because uh, the movable articulators are moving because of the muscles. The lip, the tongue, the palate, right? And we have discussed them, but I will add in future presentation and then the applications uh, in uh, dentistry and in oral maxillofacial surgery particularly. And uh, I have noted here that when you provide a denture and tell a patient that uh, it's a foreign body, does not mean that the patient should start speaking like a foreigner, which nobody can understand. So foreign body it is, but the uh, person should be able to speak normally. And uh, they have considered tongue as the most mobile articulator. And I will add in future some more references. I have already emphasized the role of reason and hearing. And uh, I think uh, I've covered everything that I intended to cover in this particular presentation. Uh, it may be lengthy, but it is worth, uh, I believe. Thank you very much.